guys, Radio Mike here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the inside of my mind. And this is episode three of my monthly movie vlog, What I Watched. Thank you so much to everyone who has watched and commented on the first two, which you can still watch. Basically, these are a monthly movie vlog, as I already said just before, I don't know why I said that again, where I talk about and do like snap reviews of every movie I watched in the month that was. This is the March edition, but before we get into it, can I please ask that you hit that subscribe button below for more content that is movies, music, games, TV shows, pop culture in general. I'm Australia's most lovable nerd. I would love if you check out some of my other videos, some of which are on screen now. I also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Radio Mike, if you'd like to chuck me as little as a dollar a month, which can go a really long way, plus all my podcasts as well. It would be great to have you checking out some of my other stuff, because the YouTube stuff is not all I do. I've been really enjoying doing this monthly movie vlog because it's really sort of forced me to watch more movies because I kind of can't get to the end of the month and have watched like one movie and do like a one minute video. So this is a really good way to keep me accountable in watching movies because I did this calculation where basically on average I'm watching like 15 movies, 12 to 15 movies a month. And I think I worked out that if I did that every month for the rest of my life, there's only 7,000 movies that I will watch for the rest of my life, which seems very low. So I guess like, I don't know, I'm, I'm really starting to freak out and be really particular about the movies I choose to watch. This month I feel like I watched a lot of movies that I didn't actually particularly like that much, but I guess I'll get into it and start with the first movie I watched in March 2021, which is Jurassic Park. Okay, so I have talked a lot already on the previous two episodes about how there are just so many gaps in classic movies that I have just never seen. Jurassic Park is one of them. The only movie in the Jurassic Park franchise that I have seen is Jurassic World, the reboot one with Chris Pratt. And I remember thinking it was pretty cool. But I really have never seen Jurassic Park, so it was really cool to just sit down and finally watch this classic movie. Obviously I love John Williams' scores, I'm a massive Harry Potter fan and John Williams is just such an amazing film composer and I think the Jurassic Park theme, which I know off by heart because it is so culturally relevant, even though I haven't seen this movie before, it is such an amazing piece of music and it is used so well throughout this film. Overall, I, I enjoyed Jurassic Park a lot. That initial moment where they see the uh, long-necked dinosaur, uh, Patasaurus, Brontosaurus, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. The one that looks like Littlefoot from The Land Before Time, that's a good reference point for any 90s kid. Three horns never play with long necks. And that theme just starts playing like the... Absolutely amazing. It's a great film. The special effects and the animation of the dinosaurs, or however they were made, I don't know how, uh, but they look amazing, especially for a film that, you know, came out when it came out. This is a really fun movie, and I would be keen to watch Jurassic Parks 2 and 3, uh, so I might put them on the list for April, and I'll see how I go with that. But Jurassic Park, really good way to kick it off. After that, I realized that I had never actually seen the final movie in the X-Men franchise, Dark Phoenix, so my second movie for 2021 was Dark Phoenix. I actually really enjoyed the, like, modern X-Men series, Days of Future Past, First Class, and I actually didn't mind X-Men Apocalypse, which I know a lot of people hated, but I heard some really bad things about Dark Phoenix, and I gotta say, they're all pretty much true. This movie was an absolute stinker. I don't particularly know what was so bad about this movie, but I think Jean Grey is not a very interesting character at all. That might be a combination of the way she is written, but also the actress who plays her, who I believe is also the actress that plays Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones. I don't know, she's just a very muted, low-key character that to me didn't really fit being this villain kind of character. I, I don't know, I just, this movie didn't vibe well with me at all. It was really boring, really slow paced. Nothing really happens and Jean Grey is really boring. Plus, there's this god awful line that I cannot believe made it to the final cut of the, of the film very early on where uh, Jennifer Lawrence, who plays Mystique, says this to Professor Xavier. And by the way, the women are always saving the men around here. You might want to think about changing the name to X-Women. I just cringed so hard when I heard that line. I, I just I, I just found that line so cringy in so many ways. I couldn't believe that, that that was included in the film. And I just remember rolling my eyes and being like, what? 
it was so weird. This is a bad movie, I don't want to watch it ever again. That being said, it is a shame that the X-Men franchise, which was really, really good, sort of had to go out on such an unceremonious low. And the other thing was, this movie is called Dark Phoenix, but then sometimes it's called X-Men Dark Phoenix, and I think it originally came out as Dark Phoenix, and then they realised that that was a really dumb branding thing because the X-Men brand is so strong, so then they started calling it X-Men Dark Phoenix. Really stupid decisions all the way through. Because I watched Dark Phoenix, I then realised there was only one movie in that X-Men universe that I hadn't seen, which was The Wolverine from 2013. <laughs> There are three Wolverine movies, X-Men Origins Wolverine, which I have seen and was just very okay from memory. This one, The Wolverine, and then Logan, which is one of my favourite superhero movies of all time, and it was absolutely amazing. The Wolverine was okay, it's set in Japan, I like Japan, it's really cool seeing movies set in Japan. Uh, it, it, the storyline is okay, I was watching a version, I don't know why, but all the Japanese language stuff was didn't have subtitles. I assume it was just a weird version I was watching because there was no subtitles, so I lost track of the story a bit. Hugh Jackman is always great as Wolverine, and I thought that overall this was pretty fun. It definitely did, like, Logan was definitely the pinnacle of the Wolverine character, and that movie was amazing. I loved it. X-Men Origins was, like, okay. This one, I think it sort of goes from lowest to highest in quality from Origins, The Wolverine, and Logan, in order of release. And The Wolverine was an okay film, and it was fun. It was very long. I probably wouldn't watch it again uh, because it was so long and not that interesting. But overall, it was fine. Next up, Raya and the Last Dragon. I did a full video review of this on my channel, which you can find on my channel. So please give that a watch. But I will just reiterate what I said here. This is a really fun Disney film. Massive Avatar The Last Airbender vibes in terms of like the different... Uh, groups or tribes within the, the bigger nation uh, and these inner disputes between them. Uh, I guess thinking about it now, maybe a month after I watched it and a month after doing that review, it has kind of sat really well with me. Like sometimes after I talk about something or think about it initially after watching it, I feel really positive about it and then a few weeks later or a few months later I'm like, oh actually that wasn't that good. Sometimes it goes in reverse. Like. When I first saw the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, and I did a review of it on here, I was really negative. But now, when I think about it, I actually think it was pretty good, and I really want to watch it again sometime. Uh, this one has just stayed the same. Like, I think Raya and the Last Dragon is a really fun movie, uh, and I really enjoyed it a lot. Go watch the full review for more. Oh boy, The Grudge was the next movie I watched, a classic horror film that I had never seen before, and for good reason, because this movie sucks. It is a really bad movie in so many ways. Funnily enough, when I was a kid, one of my favourite movies that I shouldn't have seen, but happened to see in the cinemas, was Scary Movie 4, which was, the Scary Movie franchise was like a parody franchise of all the current horror movies, and Scary Movie 4 massively parodies The Grudge a lot, so a lot of the scenes in The Grudge were really familiar to me because I had seen them essentially parodied in Scary Movie 4. So that was probably my favourite part about The Grudge, just realising that I had seen a lot of it before in parody form in Scary Movie 4. Hibachi Benihana Teriyaki this movie is so boring and like the narrative structure, like it's told in a non, uh, a non chronological way, like I'm sorry, a non linear, I believe is the correct term. So you're getting stuff here and then you jump in and you, it's very hard to keep track of what's going on in this movie. Very, very hard to keep track. And I just didn't like it. The imagery of the, of the kids, you know, the, the, the dead kids and the grudge kind of figure, like, that's very cool and creepy, and that imagery I enjoy, but overall, narratively very hard to follow, uh, and just gen generally not very interesting. I know this is an adaptation of the original Japanese film, and that the creator of the original Japanese worked on this uh, film. I believe he directed it um, in production with Sam Raimi. Uh, sorry, Sam Raimi was the producer from the Spider-Man trilogy, I think he's best known, and uh, yeah, really just did not feel very good about this movie at all. One of the worst I've watched. Following on from last month, I watched Friday the 13th Part 3. Last month I watched 1 and 2. Part 3, pretty good. Better than 2, not as good as 1. 1 is still definitely my favourite, except 3 is, as I said last time, the first time you see Jason in the hockey mark, hockey mask with the machete. That was a really cool moment. You also see him unmasked, you see his face for the first time. Hey, now cut that out right now, that's not funny! 
I don't really understand the lore of this universe though, because Jason drowned and that's the whole reason that the first movie happens because Jason died. But now it seems like he's alive, but he's not like a fully functioning person. He's like a zombie kind of person. I don't really know. I don't think it explains that. I'm going to continue to watch the Friday the 13th series this month and see how it develops because I'm very intrigued. Filmically, it's exactly the same. Those long kind of voyeuristic shots, exact same formula as the first two, nothing really different. Interestingly though, as I was watching this movie, there were so many shots in it of like things that looked deliberately as though they were meant to be a 3D film. You know those moments in movies where like the person does this in the camera, like they start and it looks like it should be in 3D. So I looked it up after and it turns out that Friday the 13th part three was one of the first ever 3D movies uh, ever released. And I remember watching it being like, Sh was this a 3D movie? Cause there are so many unnecessary moments. Like this guy's using a yo-yo and uh, yeah. Overall fine, better than two, not as good as one. Exact same formula, keen to keep watching but they're slowly getting more and more boring and generic. Okay, I said The Grudge was one of the worst, but this was the worst, and this might be very controversial because the next movie I watched was Tales from Earthsea? Tales of Earthsea? Of? From? One of the two? Uh, a Studio Ghibli film. Oh god, this film was so boring and long, and I don't remember anything that happened, and Ghibli films, I love Ghibli films. Spirited Away is one of the best movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, Spirited Away, that is just a perfect film, a perfect animated film, this incredible film. And others like uh, Grave of the Fireflies and The Wind Rises and Totoro and you know, all of them are generally very good. So I was quite excited to see Earthsea, which is based on a Western book series, I believe. And honestly, I just hated it. Like we were so bored. I watched it with my housemates, pretty much all of us just kind of totally switched off from it, but just kind of saw it through. My housemate fell asleep. I started playing Switch. I really didn't like it. The villain character spoke very quietly to the point where like you couldn't even really hear what he was saying. I don't know if we just needed to put our TV up louder, but oh boy, this was a really bad movie in so many ways and definitely the worst Ghibli film I've ever seen. Whew, don't watch it. A pretty popular one for the next movie I watched, which was Framing Britney Spears, that New York Times Britney Spears documentary about how the media treated Britney Spears as she was growing up in front of the public's eye. I enjoyed this and I felt quite disturbed by what was happening to Britney Spears. And, and we were all kind of complacent in that, like this bullying and mocking of her and uh, treating her as though she was like, you know, the public's property to make fun of. And there are scenes in this where paparazzi are following Britney and she's making it very clear that she's very uncomfortable with what's happening, but no one really stops or speaks up. This was quite a disturbing and uh, disappointing look into celebrity culture, child celebrities growing up in the limelight. Limelight? Spotlight? What's the difference between a limelight and a spotlight? I don't know, we might find out. Should I Google it? Okay, I'll Google it. So limelight means the focus of public attention, which is exactly what I would think that spotlight would mean in a celebrity context. Let's just Google that. Okay, so spotlight is intense scrutiny or public attention. So probably, it's probably spotlight that suits Britney more. I digress. This is a good documentary and also an important one. I think you should go watch it, especially if you're interested in like celebrity culture and how all this paparazzi stuff can really affect people. This was really eye-opening. And also, as soon as I finished this, I totally got onto Spotify and listened to a Britney Spears playlist because her music is banging. I'm addicted to you because you know that you're toxic. Do, 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 Kong Skull Island. Okay, uh, I've seen Godzilla, I've seen Godzilla King of the Monsters and I really wanted to see Godzilla vs Kong. Haven't yet, but I thought I might as well watch Kong Skull Island, which is, and, and I think it's amazing how we are doing these mega monster universes now. Like, I, I think we're just gonna get to a point. I, I actually was saying to a friend the other day that I think eventually every piece of media in the world is just gonna exist in the Marvel universe. Like it might not even be related to Marvel, but it's just gonna exist within that cinematic universe because it just is easier to make money under that label. I like that there are other competing universes like this monster universe that uh, 
the Godzilla and King Kongs all fit into, and I think it's really cool. Kong Skull Island was good. I loved the almost emotional focus. Well, not really, but like, I liked Kong, King Kong as a character who is lashing out at the humans because essentially, like, they are intruding on his space and he's really just defending his himself and his land. Like, I thought that was a really cool perspective to see King Kong through. The action's really good, the characterizations are all really good. Nothing too special, but I don't think these monster films need to have much narrative depth. Like, I just enjoyed seeing King Kong. That shot where King Kong in the sunset or the sunrise or whatever it is appears that those really harsh oranges and almost like the silhouette of this giant gorilla in the sky was just one of the greatest, most beautiful scenes I've ever seen. Like it really showcased this monstrosity and what this is and how scary it is. So really enjoyed this. Can't wait to see Godzilla vs Kong now. Next up, and absolutely my favourite for the month, I love this movie, Pacific Rim. How did I not see this movie earlier? This movie is like totally my thing. This is everything I live for. Giant fighting robots, killing kaiju monsters in the ocean. What else could you want in a movie? This movie is so cheesy, but like it, it is really narratively deep. It works really well. It's very cool. If you like anime and if you like cartoons and if you grew up watching things like Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z and, you know, obviously there's the link in this to Neon Genesis Evangelion and stuff like that. Transformers. Like, this is great. This, this is all of that done so well and not shit. I absolutely love this movie. Uh, I thought some of the dialogue was pretty cheesy. Being an Australian, all of the Australian people in this film, because a lot of it has, there's some main Australian characters, really bad accents, I don't know who they were, really bad Australian accents, but this movie is sick. I have to watch the sequel. I saw there was a Netflix series as well. Pacific Rim, so, so cool. I think this was my highlight for the month. I absolutely loved it. Next up, Practical Magic. This was one I watched with Magia. Uh, it's her favorite movie of all time. We watched it, it's pretty good. It's about these two women who come from a magical family. They are witches and they accidentally kill an abusive boyfriend and then there's a detective trying to find them. It was kind of weird between whether this was a fantasy or a crime or a rom-com even. Like there was so many melded genres. This is a, it's a pretty fun film. It's quite long. Uh, overall, I don't have too much to say about it. I really enjoyed it though. Like, a bunch of laughs, a bit of fun, the magic stuff was really cool. It's very fairy tale and a lot of the narrative is about like, you know, the relationship between two sisters and their sisterly love, and I think that was really nice as well. So, uh, practical magic, decent kind of rom-com fantasy thing, and overall, like, an enjoyable watch. Okay, we've got a few more left before we wrap the video. Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise was the next one. Saw the trailers for this when it came out in cinemas and really wanted to see it, just never saw it. Watched it, it's pretty good. Like, very video gamey in the way it like resets when he dies, he restarts at a certain point and he has to try and break this cycle. And the in-world explanation for that is really good. It's because of a creature that can do that and it curses him or whatever, whatever it was. I don't know, I was kind of happy to just let that slide. It was pretty cool, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I guess one of my main problems with this that, it, that just made me feel frustrated was that every single time he dies, which is a lot, he has to do everything again in like the exact way he's done it. Speak to these people who know about what's happening and convince them that he's going through the thing. And like, obviously they skip over it, but I just felt so angry for Tom Cruise's character because I'm like, Man, it must be so shit having to explain this every time and do this every single time. You must be getting so bored and like being driven insane. Wow, that would suck so much. Overall, really fun sci-fi. Uh, enjoyed it a lot and would totally watch a sequel, which I believe may be in the works. I said in last week's episode that someone could recommend a film and I would watch it and talk about it on this. Well, I did that. It was Geo Extreme. Thanks for commenting. They said, hey Mike, loving the series, I just finished Knives Out, and if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend you watch this, this month. Keep up the good work, can't wait for you hit, to hit the big 1,000. We did hit the big 1,000 subscribers, thanks. Subscribe, don't forget. And I watched Knives Out, a really, really cool kind of 
uh, tongue-in-cheek in some ways uh, mystery, uh, murder mystery with Daniel Craig. This was a lot of fun. I wasn't sure how seriously you were supposed to take it because the main female character uh, can't lie without vomiting. A lot of this film is very uh, tongue-in-cheek, I think, but Daniel Craig is so good in this. And the murder mystery is good. Like, when you kind of find out at the end exactly what happens and you find out that Daniel Craig has figured it out and cracked the kind of mystery that's happening here, it is really well thought out and there's all the evidence there. And I kind of would have watched this movie again so I can try and pick up on little things that I missed last time. There was one moment that involves the name of a character sounding similar to a word. And if you've seen the movie, you know it. And I'd be keen to know what you thought about this because I thought it was really stupid, this reveal. If you've seen the movie, you know it. If you haven't, watch it and let me know what you think. But overall, Really fun movie. I'm glad I watched it. I can see why so many people liked it so much. It was really good. Second last is Frankenstein from 1931. I just wanted to check this out. I don't know what got me thinking about Frankenstein, but I guess I think a lot about how characters like Frankenstein and Dracula and such are still to this day very well-known characters, but they're not very relevant anymore. I think most people would know that there is a Frankenstein book by Mary Shelley. I tried to read it once and it was just so dense, I could barely get through it and I think I stopped like a quarter of the way through. But I guess I just got thinking about why does everyone know Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster and like probably hasn't seen any of the movies or read the book that it's from. So I just wanted to check out Frankenstein in film, and this was a really good movie. It's a really old movie, and it kind of felt a bit eerie knowing that everyone in this movie is probably dead now, because it came out in 1931, which is nearly a hundred years ago. But I enjoyed the kind of philosophy behind this, and it would be interesting to actually read the book and sort of figure out what Mary Shelley was trying to say with it, because Frankenstein is just brought to life against his will, and him trying to figure out what he is and, and, and who he is and why he exists and being a bit of a reckless monster because of that and being persecuted by the town. People take one look at me and go, ah, help, run! But yeah, this was a really good movie and a great example of like what cinema started as because, you know, this is a really, really, really old movie, but it, it really holds up. I recommend checking it out. You can get it online for free because it's like beyond copyright. So yeah, check it out. Finally, on a disappointing note, this 2020 science fiction film called Underwater. I really like underwater stuff. Like, I really want to watch a good movie about a sea monster, like a violent sea monster. I've watched, like, The Meg, which was okay, but I mean more like deep, deep sea. And this movie kind of felt like what, it, what that was. There's these scientists that are like drilling deep in the deepest depths of the ocean where no human has ever been before. And suddenly this giant monster st monster creatures start attacking them. And it ends up, they end up being related to Cthulhu, the HP Lovecraft figure. Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Yeah! The evil hate-filled Cthulhu from a dimension far away. And uh, this deep, huge, huge creature under the water. You see a bit of Cthulhu and it's very scary, but overall this was a crap movie. Like, uh, the underwater shots were really hard to see what was going on. You never real I never really knew where people were or what was going on. I don't know, it just wasn't a very good movie at all. Not a well-told story. It gets good in the last 10 minutes when you start seeing Cthulhu, this massive sea monster that is really, really scary to see. But I would love if anyone recommends or knows a movie about a sea monster, because I really like that stuff. It spooks me out, sea monster stuff. A sea monster that's a, a sea monster film that's really good. Let me know, because Underwater was not it, and I do not recommend it. Okay, that is everything I watched in March 2021. As always, comment below. I will watch one movie that people recommend in this video comment section. Uh, also, please subscribe, check out some of my other vids. You can also go to my website, radiomike.com.au to find all of my content there. My podcast, 20th Century Boy and Harry Potter and the Boys, a fan fiction Harry Potter podcast, wherever you podcast and in full video forms on this channel. Go check out my stuff, subscribe, like, all of that stuff, and I will see you next month or in my next video. My name's been Radio Mike, and I will see you later. But I went to run my hand through your hair and I noticed you were attached to string You were a puppet this whole time You were attached to string You 
were a puppet this whole time. I think back.